And I'm talking about microalgae. That's right, almost invisible to the eye, microalgae are one of the most potent, extraordinary sources of bioactives on the planet. And today, we're going to share with what it can do for you. All right, welcome back. And Vincent, great to be here. Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you, uh, This is going to be an exciting hour. So, let's dive right in. What the heck are algae? So algae and microalgae specifically are uh, single cell plants that are living in aquatic environments, in different environments. You can find them in the seawater, in fresh water, but also in some specific environments such as tundra, Arctic tundra as well, and in the desert as well. So pretty much everywhere. Uh, so they are there on Earth for billion years. Uh, actually, they are at the origin of the oxygen that we breathe on, in the atmosphere. Uh, they are also at the origin of the fuel that we put in our cars because as a fossilized biomasses, they have uh, generated oil that we are producing today, uh, naturally. So that's, that's extremely interesting to uh, think of those benefits for the humankind that the, the microalgae have delivered uh, so far. So that's, that's what are microalgae. So microalgae, I mean, they're single-celled organisms. A lot of people can think of a bacteria as a single-cell organism. Yeah. But they're kind of like bacteria, but they can make, they can have photosynthesis. They can use sunlight. Exactly. To, and CO2 to produce oxygen, right? Exactly. That's the process that we call photosynthesis. And microalgae are plants, so they are... Uh, plant-based, meaning that they are able to use the light, the, the, the light from, from the sun, to convert this energy from the light uh, and the CO2 and some minerals into biomass and oxygen. So this, in this biomass specifically, uh, there is a different uh, bioactives, a very an amazing diversity of uh, bioactives uh, that those different species can, can deliver. Now, some people think about algae and they say, oh, seaweed. Uh, but seaweed is not algae. Uh, I mean, it's a bigger form. I yes, guess. exactly. That's <clears> the <throat> bigger form of, uh, of, of microalgae. Actually, microalgae are the foundation of all plants on Earth. Uh, some uh, become seaweed and they stay in the aquatic environment. Uh, some different uh, species become the, uh, specifically the green uh, microalgae become the, the, the terrestrial plant that we, that we know and that we that are surrounding our, us uh, on a daily basis. So microalgae are the foundation of all plants on Earth. Uh, hence, you can find uh, pretty much everything that is in the plants, in the seaweed, is all, all, also in the microalgae at the origin, uh, from the, as a starting point, I would say. So how would microalgae be used in our everyday life? How would I be interacting with it without my knowledge? <laughs> so as I say, first you breathe every day. <laughs> so you use the air that, uh, which by almost one third of the, earth of, the, uh, of, the, of the oxygen, which is present in the atmosphere, uh, is produced by the, by the natural microalgae, which are everywhere. Uh, so that's the first benefit, as I said. But on your daily life, uh, microalgae products are increasingly used in uh, food cosmetic products. Uh, so you have some natural colorants that are made from microalgae. You have some antioxidants, uh, natural antioxidants that are used in uh, uh, different food supplements, dietary supplements uh, worldwide. And that's something which is uh, gaining some interest because there are plenty of uh, biological properties that are scientifically demonstrated now. So, can we use these uh, as fuel? Yeah, you, you could. Actually, that's possible because uh, uh, microalgae are extremely rich in oil. So you could extract oil from those biomasses and turn them into biofuels. Uh, obviously, this is not what we are doing here. Uh, what we do is really specific ingredients, specialty ingredients. But by essence, yes, you can really use microalgae to, to, to produce oil uh, uh, 
uh, atom, atom, and there atom are some companies that are actually yes. looking into that. Yes, indeed. So you need really it's require a lot of uh, of space, of volume, uh, and also to be cost effective because obviously the, the fuel that you put in your in your tank has to at a lower price, even though at current time the price is kind of uh, going up, but still uh, producing it by microalgae is still a little bit expensive. So I think, in my opinion at least, uh, we have 10 to 15 years of research to, be, to have some reliable source of uh, biofuels uh, for microalgae. So a lot of my listeners know about spirulina and chlorella. Yes. Um, and people associate uh, spirulina and chlorella with health benefits. Um, is that just scratching the surface uh, of what you're doing? Yes, exactly. I think uh, spirulina and chlorella are great products, uh, really great products. Uh, they are rich in protein, rich in vitamins and minerals. Um, but that's just two species among the 10,000, hundreds of thousands of species that are rich in other compounds, new compounds that are delivering new and innovative benefits for nutrition and, and, and cosmetics. So um, spirulina and chlorella are, yes, the, the, the two most known species uh, in the microalgae world, an extremely good product, but they are just really uh, the tip of the iceberg, I would say. So, yeah. So, in fact, you're, you and I are sitting in front of one of your bioreactors, and people, I hope, are seeing this in the camera. This is not what most of us think of as, as algae. Uh, it's not green. Uh, in fact, it's uh, reddish brown, I guess is a nice way of saying it. And these, you're actually growing algae here that are different colors. And what, tell me, why would you be interested in a red-brown algae instead of a, a green chlorella? Yeah, the, the, the color is just a, a, a vision that you have uh, and we, we relate the, the color to a specific bioactive, of course, because the color of the microalgae uh, are made by the photosynthetic pigments that they are featuring. And those photosynthetic pigments are really unique and are really dependent on the uh, condition where the microalgae is living. So as you know, obviously, uh, the green microalgae uh, are uh, in a specific environment that you can find in the sea, in the, in the ponds, in the, in, the, in the lakes, etc., and the rivers. Um, whereas uh, you have in the sea, in the oceans, um, some different layers of water uh, to which the light from the sun uh, can go through to a certain wavelength, and uh, that will trigger on the, light, on the microalgae a specific photosynthetic pigment that will absorb the color, uh, the, 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 the specific color uh, related to this pigment. So what you see here, the red, red brown uh, microalgae, is the uh, ability of this microalgae to live in a specific environment and to develop specific compounds uh, thanks to this environment. Um, so we are really interested in those uh, microalgae, uh, green, brown, diatoms, any kind of species that can deliver these, those bioactives. Uh, and they do that thanks to the ability of uh, producing, adapting themselves to their environments thanks to the, the, the metabolic pathway that they will implement. So, um, on a segue to that, a lot of people now know that we can genetically engineer bacteria mm -hmm. to produce compounds. Uh, many people know that most insulin is produced by bacteria. Uh, who have been genetically engineered. There's nothing genetically engineered behind you, right? I mean, no. you're, uh, you're not telling microalgae by manipulating their genome to make a compound. No, we don't need that. Actually, we learn from them <laughs> how to uh, extract the, naturally the bioactives. So we are just at the start of the domestication of the microalgae. 
that's, that's, that's a new industry which is arriving now. And that's something that uh, we learn from the, from the algae, from the environment in which they live. And what we try to do here, we try to apply the culture conditions that are mimicking the natural condition where they live in order to uh, maximize the biological potential of each microbe. So we don't need to use any genetic modification. We just have to use and to understand how the microbe naturally develop their bioactive. So does your company, and I ask this off camera, does your company go out and find an algae that maybe wasn't known about what it did and you grow it here mm -hmm. and then you extract the bioactive compounds and you go, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> look, this is, this is an exciting compound. We know about this compound, but we had no idea it was in this. Is, is that what you're doing? Yeah, we do that, but we do, um, actually we do both things. We are able to screen the natural environment. Uh, some in new environments, so we did some screening in Corsica, in French Guiana, in other uh, places in the world as well. Uh, but we do that uh, with the universities, with academic partners that are uh, accessing some, some, some new strain, some new environment, and we are more there just to identify the strain, to clean it up from the other uh, single cells that are around it, and to make sure to fully characterize it and to, to, to make it grow. Uh, so our, our job is more to really to, to, to make sure that from one cell that we have identified, we are able to, 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 understand, to develop a process that can make a real quantity of uh, biomass to, to develop th those ingredients. Uh, so yes, we can uh, work uh, from nature, identify in nature in new environments uh, some specific strain, but we do also work with some strain collection uh, that are owned by university everywhere in the world. You have one in, the, in, the, in Texas University, which was a famous one. Uh, in the States, but uh, you have a, a different uh, uh, strain collection in Europe, in Japan, uh, from which we source different uh, uh, microalgae and we will screen uh, 10, 15 different microalgae on a specific project that we have in mind, which is designed by the marketing and the science team at Microfit. So every, obviously every ingredient that we want to launch, we, want, we have a specific idea in mind to deliver a specific nutritional benefit or cosmetic benefit. So, I think people want to know, um, aside from eating algae, what sort of micronutrients, uh, bioactive compounds, are in microalgae that we should know about and we should be using? So, so microalgae are extremely diversified. So there are 20,000, probably more bioactive compounds in microalgae. Um, but there are some specific compounds that you can find only in microalgae, such as probably the most known are omega-3 fatty acids. Those are the essential lipids, as you know. Uh, so microalgae are, are the only living organism able to produce naturally those uh, omega-3 fatty acids that have a lot of benefits. Uh, on the cardiovascular uh, health, on uh, the gener general brain health, health, mental health, brain health, etc. Um, so that's one example of, uh, of those specific bioactive. And the second uh, example is a specific pigment such as uh, fucoxanthin. Fucoxanthin is a, is a specific xanthophile, it's, it's a type of, of, of pigment that the microalgae use to capture the light. Uh, on a specific wavelength, and this fucoxanthin uh, molecule, uh, you can only find it in the marine environment, and uh, originally from, from the microalgae, specifically diatoms and von microalgae. So this pigment, fucoxanthin, is uh, really something of interest for us at Microfit. We have developed product uh, out of uh, uh, fucoxanthin, specifically brain fit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something which is really uh, unique and uh, on which we have uh, invested a lot of energy to develop a uh, sustainable process to, to produce it. And you're also using these compounds in cosmetics. Yeah. Why would I want to smear algae on my face? 
Oh, that's that's uh, that's a good question. It's true that when, as soon as you are using natural ingredients, you will have to uh, manage color, taste, possibly when you taste it, or, or odor that may be different from what you are using on a daily life. And the idea is for us, of course, as our uh, job is to provide ingredients that are e easy to use for our customers, uh, to develop a formulation that are incorporating our ingredients that are totally uh, odorless, that have a nice color, that are stable also over time uh, in different conditions, uh, making sure that when you apply the ingredient in a form uh, formulated product, in a, in a cosmetic cream, that's uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, nice to apply. You will, you will test that in, the, in our lab later. So, you know, algae obviously absorbs sunlight and these pigments absorb sunlight. Yes. So, wouldn't it be great to have uh, an algae pigment on my skin when I'm out exposed to the sun? Yeah, uh, that, that, that's great. Sounds I mean, like a good idea. <laughs> that's an extremely good idea and it's uh, actually what we do here at Microfit is that we are uh, extracting specific pigments from from uh, this microalgae, by the way, which is a, it's a, it's a red microalgae. So, um, algae are good for the environment, right? Um, they absorb CO2, and they don't use much water. Is that is that right? They, they don't drink a lot? No, they don't drink a lot. Actually, they, they just use uh, water uh, to, to, to live and to uh, to develop themselves, but they are not consuming water, such as a big, like cereal, for instance, which are having a large uh, water use or cotton that we are using for, for textile fibers. Uh, what we use here, specifically at Microfit, the way we produce is a, is a control environment where the water and the mineral salt are recycled, so we are not using so, so much water compared to other uh, crops and other plant productions. Uh, and yes, you're right, uh, the way we try to produce microalgae at Microfit is really uh, in a sustainable mode using the uh, natural light but also artificial light made from renewable energy. And we are uh, producing, so thanks to this light, the microalgae will convert the CO2 into biomass and oxygen. Uh, at a global scale today, all the microalgae that are present in the environment, in the oceans, in the lakes and the rivers, are consuming one third of the total CO2 from the, from the from the all the plants. So this is quite significant, uh, and they have the ability to capture a lot uh, of the CO2. Yeah. Now you just uh, you received a large grant from the EU here at Microfit. T tell us, uh, we saw the building going up as we as we entered. What was this grant for? What what are you doing? The, the grant was a, was a, a very nice achievement from, from the team because uh, it was a recognition of, uh, of by the EU that what we are doing is really uh, what they call the flagship uh, technology for, for the for European uh, industry. So um, we, we, we get this award last year, uh, which is a 15 million grant, which is one of the most selective process in Europe to get these grants. Uh, and, and we get it last year uh, with the objective to develop a first of its kind plant, uh, what we call a bio raffinery, meaning that we are able to produce uh, a large number of microalgae at microfit. Uh, we are producing between 10 and 15 microalgae, different new microalgae new to the world. Uh, from those microalgae, we are able to uh, develop specific extraction process, sustainable processes that are uh, deliver new product, new ingredients. So the idea and the concept of this uh, scale program that we call uh, is to uh, really be able to have a platform of production at scale, uh, which is uh, implementing sustainable process for nutrition, food, cosmetic, but also animal nutrition. So we have partners around that and we will develop the um, the, one of the biggest plants uh, uh, of microalgae which will have unique properties. I think it's a good point. You, you can grow algae as food, uh, either for us, but particularly for animals. Yeah. I think most people don't realize that you know, fish uh, 
are recipients of eating microalgae. Yes. And as, as my viewers know, uh, you are what you eat, but you are what the thing you're eating ate. And feeding either fish or animals, algae may have huge benefits for us, both in, it doesn't cost a lot of land mass uh, and a lot of fertilizer to produce biomass with, yes. with algae, yeah? yeah? And the benefit then is in all these bioactive compounds. Uh, so it, is that why the EU is so interested? Because we can't feed ourselves if we keep doing what yes, we're doing. Yes, exactly. The EU was really, uh, really uh, but really, still really is interested in this process. Uh, microalgae are the primary producer of essential uh, nutrients. So we talk about the omega-3 fatty acids, but also some uh, uh, mineral salts, some uh, uh, specific uh, uh, pigments, such as fucoxanthin. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you said, uh, those are um, at the basis of the food chain uh, in the natural environment. So what we are doing here is a kind of shortcut where we are providing directly to the cons consumers who are partners, who food supplement uh, labs, who cosmetic uh, uh, partners, uh, cosmetic brands. Uh, we uh, provide a shortcut to this uh, extraordinary, amazing diversity of bioactive that the microalgae can deliver. So, yeah, we skip the, the rest of the food chain, I would say, meaning that we save also for the humanity uh, the land which is used, we save a lot of water, a lot of energy, so we try to rationalize everything like that. Um, th that's the idea. Now I know a lot of, a lot of your products uh, are extracted from the algae. Yeah. And when people hear extraction in the United States, they worry about harsh chemicals like benzene, like chemicals that are also going to be harmful to us and the environment. You don't do anything like that here. No, no, no. It's uh, we, we have we made the choice si since the inception of uh, microfit to only use uh, green solvents, uh, meaning water and ethanol, which is a bio bio sourced ethanol, uh, and that's those the two uh, solvents that we are using, uh, and that's more than enough actually because uh, as you have seen in our, in our factory by playing on the different parameters the physical properties of the algae you are able to extract pretty much everything you need without any harsh uh, chemicals any, any something anything that could be harmful uh, to the um, environment and also to the workers that are that are there and obviously the consumer so no we are just using green solvent and we are also recycling those solvents right now so we are also limiting our environmental impact and the consumption of, of those uh, products. Well, one of the things we are doing in your lab, your, your hatchery, your incubator, and one of the interesting things is you, each algae has its own wants uh, in terms of how much carbon dioxide it likes, how much light it likes, and you actually find out the needs of each algae. So you're not just pumping red sludge <laughs> through these tubes. Um, you found out what this wants to grow. Yes, exactly. It's a little bit more complicated than, the, <laughs> than that. And that's part of our expertise, I would say. That's, what, that's why also we were recognized by the EU and by also some of their partners to, to have this expertise on the uh, understanding how the microalgae grow in the best environment possible. Uh, making that, making sure that we are extracting out of those biomasses uh, ingredients that are safe, that are effective, and that are sustainably produced. So this is the objective of, of microfit. But you're right. For each of those species, we need to develop specific processes, uh, and this is of expertise to understand how to grow the algae by combining the mineral salt, the light, the level of CO2 that we will increase, we will add in the air that the, the microalgae will, will use. So everything, all those parameters are, are monitored and uh, we develop the processes for each of those microalgae. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. So, folks, this is not pond scum <laughs> that they're they're pumping around here. This is, this is actually really deep science. And 
they the, the beauty of what you're doing is you're you're selecting a species of algae or multiple algae uh, for a compound that has either known um, human benefit or a compound that you suspect is going to have a great human benefit because of what you observe in, in nature. And now you can grow this at scale yeah. rather than just in a test tube. Exactly. Yeah. That is always part of the strategy of Microfit to be able to, from what we do at the lab, to be able to make it, to make it at the industrial scale because uh, ultimately we want to deliver ingredients that are at sufficient volume to be used by our, by our customer, by the food supplement lab, by the cosmetic brands. So that's always part of our R&D development to, to think in terms of industrialization and scale up of the processes. That's really part of our DNA. Um, but we, that's the production part, which is really at the center of strategy, but also we, this is not enough. Uh, what we do as well is to make sure that what we develop as ingredients are effective, are obviously safe, are regulatory approved, but also are effective uh, for our, our customers and ultimately to the consumer. So we develop also the studies, the science uh, around the ingredients in order to make sure that what we can use is really useful and uh, helpful to the benefit of the consumer. Well, so let's talk about one of your new novel compounds um, for human nutrition, and it's called BrainFit. Uh, tell me about the key molecules that make up BrainFit. So it's a combination of at least three key molecules. The first one, and I already mentioned about it, is fucoxanthin, mm -hmm. which is a specific uh, bioactive, a specific uh, pigment. Uh, from the uh, uh, a diatom, a microalgae called thiodactylum, thiodactylum tricornitum, and this microalgae is uh, naturally producing this fucoxanthin. So fucoxanthin is extremely uh, powerful in terms of its natural antioxidant properties. Another one is uh, an omega-3 fatty acid called EPA, uh, which is uh, also uh, has some specific biological properties. And a third uh, family of compounds is called phycoprostein. And phycoprostein are really specific molecules that you can only find in brain fit. Uh, that's a derivative from omega-3 fatty acids and that are also delivering uh, specific uh, benefits. So the combination of those three uh, molecules uh, in brain fit uh, deliver uh, the result, the scientific results that we have demonstrated on brain health. Yeah, you know, I think these are very important points for, for my viewers that, you know, plants, particularly algae, um, as strange as it may seem, have to have sunlight, but sunlight, the photons in sunlight, are damaging to the cellular process of algae, to their mitochondria, which are called chloroplasts. So they produce these compounds to you know, stop that damage from sunlight. And to me, the exciting thing is that when we eat those compounds or you produce these compounds in a supplement, that we know from my last book, uh, Unlocking the Keto Code, that those phenols, those polyphenols, that the plants have produced to protect their mitochondria, we then get the benefit by protecting our mitochondria when we, we eat these plants. And it's, uh, you know, it all comes around in a full circle. You're right, we're, as much as we don't realize, we're, we're de dependent uh, on these processes. Yeah. Uh, so good for you. <laughs> the other thing I want to talk about, we, we were talking off, off camera, we're beginning to realize how little we know about the nutritional aspects of, of algae. And I, I brought up uh, an experiment in dolphins in the United States. Uh, the United States has dolphin colonies uh, for the U.S. Navy, and I won't go into why. Uh, but there's a pot of dolphins in the Atlantic Ocean and a pot of dolphins in the Pacific Ocean. And they're the same species, bottlenose dolphin. But the Pacific dolphins 
age quite rapidly, and the Pacific dolphins get all the diseases of the West. They get diabetes, they get old age, they don't think very clearly. But the Atlantic dolphins don't, and they don't acquire these. And yet they're the same breed, they live essentially the same salt water. And these researchers realized that the dolphins on the Atlantic were eating totally different fish than the dolphins on in the west coast of the Pacific. And when they broke down the compounds in these fish, they actually found some odd chain fatty acids that were very prevalent in the diet of the Atlantic dolphins, but not in the Pacific dolphins. And they, it, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, you're you're on the right track. If we, you know, we need to identify those compounds. Speaking of which, we know the Japanese who eat a lot of seaweed and a lot of uh, seafood have much higher levels of fucoxanthin exactly. in, in them than we do. And they're very smart. So I, I need fucoxanthin, right? We all need. <laughs> we all need. Yes. Yeah. yes. And, and it's just this compound in algae. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, that, that's really interesting um, uh, situation there. This is true that uh, you can really, from the diet that you have, uh, really understand also the environment in which you live. So that's important to be connected to this environment, of course, and to understand what you can get uh, from the food that you, that you have. Uh, so part of the strategy, of course, from the dietary supplement industry is also to, to bring some uh, additional bioactive uh, to the food to help people to uh, kind of uh, uh, get uh, what they have to do from what they have to get from the from the food in case it's not available in the natural food that they are using every day yeah yeah I mean we we all cannot move to Japan or <laughs> to the south of France and and eat the fish that you eat I'd love to but and I do but yeah for me uh, as, a, as a supplement company, we all can't do that. And so if we can deliver the active ingredients that we now know are why the health benefit of a Mediterranean diet, for instance, or an Okinawan diet in Japan in, in something that people can take as a, as a supplement, then we all benefit. And obviously, that's what you want to do. Exactly. So what, uh, what else... So, all right, you're going to feed the world, you're going to take care of us and our brains. What other exciting product are, are you doing here? We, are, we have plenty of new products in the pipeline. Uh, at the moment, we are working on 35 different new ingredients, both for nutrition and cosmetics. So we have plenty of things that will be launched over the next few years. Um, the next one in nutrition will target, we'll have an holistic approach on the sport nutrition. Because we are, we are understanding that sport nutrition is just not sport. It's also the way that we feel, we react, we interact with other people. So we have a product uh, which is called Phycoactive that will be uh, launched next year, I hope, uh, that will uh, under development at the moment at Microfit, uh, that will target this uh, category of holistic sport nutrition. That's, uh, that's a new product after BrainFit. But we have also a range of uh, skincare ingredients that are in development, and we launched uh, last month Luteana, which is an ingredient targeting the sensitive skin, uh, which is obviously a, a huge issue in the world. Um, so that's an ingredient that has received also some award from a cosmetic uh, industry, uh, and it's really, really promising. And the first ingredient that we add in, in cosmetic, it's called Renouvelance, and Renouvelance is uh, uh, targeting what we call the urban stress uh, protection. So that's one uh, of those examples of ingredients that protect the skin from the uh, effect of UVs and pollution together. So that's the new ingredient that we have launched just this year. So can you, can you get too much of a good thing? Can, can I eat too much microalgae? <laughs> Uh, Do you go home for dinner and have a big plate of <laughs> microalgae, I guess I'm asking? I would not recommend so, but I think I, 
the idea for, for of, of course, what we do at Microfit is to we develop ingredients that have, have to be used at a specific dose, uh, and the efficacy of those ingredients are developed on a specific dosage, uh, which is scientifically uh, established. Uh, so you have to, to follow the, the instruction of use that the food supplement company are, are, are providing on the labels. Uh, so that's something which is quite uh, straightforward. Uh, and it's really recommended to use that at the level of which you will benefit from obviously the full safety, but also the efficacy of the ingredient. All right, so we're about out of time, but we have an audience question uh, on every one of our podcasts. And this one, I, I want you to answer as well, and I'll give my opinion. So the audience question comes from Jeanette Jenke on YouTube. Dr. Joe TV, there is such a thing, says spirulina contains pseudo vitamin B12, which is bad. It competes with real vitamin B12 and blocks it to enter the cell. What say you? All right, Vincent, what do you think? I would agree. <laughs> uh, I, I know that, uh, from, from, from to my knowledge at least, um, I know that the vitamin B12 in spirulina is uh, this uh, pseudo vitamin B12. Uh, so I think it's probably not really useful to consume spirulina uh, in case you would like to get some uh, vitamin B12. But in microalgae, you may find some uh, uh, B12, natural source of B12 that are uh, not pseudo B12 that, uh, that we need to, we can use, yes. Uh, great answer. Yeah, it was actually thought by, by vegans for many years, up until about the year 2000, that the B12 in spirulina was, was available and was B12, and it's, it's not. Uh, the good news is about half of us, or bad news is about half of us can t have a genetic mutation that prevents us from taking vitamin B12 and converting it into methyl B12, which is an active form. So all of my patients, I have them take a methyl B12, a sublingual, put it under their tongue. But no, you, you can have the spirulina, but please supplement with methyl B12. Um, and we, we can measure this in everybody's blood, and it's amazing how many people uh, are deficient in methyl B12, even among those who are who are taking B12, so just supplement with it. It's the easiest way. Well, Vincent, this has been great. Where can listeners learn more about you and Microfit? Well, so the idea, of course, is to to get in touch and to to check out our website and to subscribe on our LinkedIn white page, LinkedIn web page. Uh, you have also a newsletter, so you can get uh, a lot of information on our new product development, the new product launches that will come in the next uh, few months and years. Uh, and obviously you can meet us in any uh, industry trade show, uh, consumer show in the US and in the Europe. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now! So those of you who are using your soda makers at home, Please get rid of that. That's not a health benefit.